Welcome back to the Legally Judgy Podcast. I'm Nicole. And I'm Alexa. Hello, my friend. Hello, friend. That's it. Okay. This is lots of <laughs> very warm and energetic. Okay. So I'm just sorry. Gonna, I thought you were going to go right into the bulletin board. Uh, you say that I like skip the foreplay or whatever the thing. The, oh, geez. <laughs> we're getting now we're going last straight time, to it, aren't we? Last we really time are we were like, the foreplay. oh, you're just going to get straight to the bulletins and there is no like, yeah. Whatever well, the, is. the problem is we're just too, what is the term? Something in the night? We're crossing trains? Ships in the night, Ships you in idiot. The night. <laughs> trains. I guess trains would I guess have. trains could work too. Yeah. What the hell? I said I don't want to live in the ocean. It probably We came, discussed that last that time. That probably became a phrase before trains were around. So that's probably why ships in the night. Because I think that's ships were first. Very supportive of you. I, forget, I forgive you for calling me an idiot okay. just now. That was rude. So for the bulletins, if you have not heard, we have a Patreon. Mm-hmm. And it is only for our most loyal and loving followers. Oh, dang. We're guilting them in if today. If you are one of them, if you really love us, please join our Patreon. Where you can get uncut episodes where you hear about... The crazy shit that happens in our day-to-day lives. More personalized, I would say. Very personal. If you miss hearing about what's going on in our lives, yeah, because we're narcissists and we think <laughs> that's really going to sell, <laughs> then please join. So we've got the uncut episodes. We've got a community hub that has like behind-the-scenes footage, uh, polls, random questions, whatever we feel like asking and talking about, mm-hmm. and the minisodes, which have like just enough legal content to give you some like water cooler chit chat without you really having to like learn too much which i think is the key i was gonna say enough legal chit chat that we can pass as lawyers yes as as believable lawyers here yeah Mm -hmm. okay and we have to shout out our new patron um so miss c we can't tell we've had a very heated discussion about whether your name is julie or july Mm -hmm. i vote july because i'm a cancer and i love myself yep a lot that checks out i'm gonna go julie Julie. j u l y and actually let us know in our Patreon. Please. <laughs> like, we have a special chat board for our patrons. Please tell us how do you pronounce it. Yeah. I really want to know now. We okay. have a bet going. We do. Egos are involved. Always. It's getting serious. All right. That concludes the bulletin board. Mm-hmm. We're just going to now go into our <laughs> patron only content. So, if you want to hear what has happened to us this week, go sign up. Give us your monies. That now concludes our patron section and we're now going to be talking about the subject of today's episode where basically a lot of accusations have been not even said. They've just been like slung. That's messy. What's a, what's a dramatic term for someone like this Tasha K wielded. Wiel- ooh, wielded. I think that's how you say it. Sounds that. like a knight. Mm-hmm. Uh, slung. Yeah, just Tasha K, we got her. She's like a, a vlogger. I, I guess at best, you'd call her a YouTube vlogger. Truly at best. Who is like this gossip columnist. columnist. Why can't I say that? Mm-hmm. M, and N is al- M and N is always yeah. hard for me. Let yeah. me just avoid that. Let okay. me try again. And I'll just say she talks about celebrity gossip. Yep. That is her job. In and air quotes. Cardi B, unfortunately, became the target of said celebrity gossip. <sighs> Wrong one to pick. I mean, really, like, between Nikki and Cardi, I'm like, mm, those are two bitches you don't want to fuck with. I do agree with you. I do. And I think that, and especially, they will they will see through what they say. Like, yeah. if they say they're going to sue you, as Cardi did, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they will sue you. Mm-hmm. So you better be ready. And have those coins ready to go. And this one is exciting because we've talked about defamation, but we've never talked about one that has been successful. So with that, let's get into it. Let's get into it. You want to give us the backgrounds? Sure. So listen, for a detailed background on Cardi B, you should definitely go check out our Cardi B battles surf shop model over tattoo episode. That is the title. It's very long. Beautifully titled. Probably could have been more succinct. It's fine. We tried. Um, It's an episode from season one. But for now, we'll just touch on a few highlights in case you've been living under a rock and don't know who Cardi B is. So Cardi said that she was a member of the Bloods gang since the age of 16. Um, We would not recommend that. We are not about the gang life. Legal advice is probably not. Yeah, no. Um, But then she tries to turn her life around. So she goes Mm -hmm. from getting fired from a deli in Tribeca, which is in New York City, to being a stripper across the street from said deli. Made a lot more money. Which was a suggestion made by the manager who fired her. So that's cute. You know, that's sentimental. It's like a nice annual review. We Look, can't keep you, but we've got a good idea for you. That manager is like, <laughs> I might have to fire you, but there's better opportunities yeah. just across the way. <laughs> yeah. It was just like across the street. Literally across the street. Yeah. Okay. It, but but she said it saved her life, she right? Did. Yep. Yep. And she ends up going back to school after this and she got out of an abusive relationship, which like, go you, Cardi. Yeah. So then she originally kind of starts to gain some popularity on Vine. Throwback. R.I.P. Vine. TBT. Is R.I.P. It, is it R.I.P.? Is it down? 
hasn't it been down for some time? I just assume people weren't using it. Let's say, let's put it this way. If you think it's up, it's definitely down. (laughs) And RIP to you and not just Vine. All right. So she gets big on Vine around 2013. RIP Vine. And then between 2000 and 2015 and 2016, she appears on two seasons of Love and Hip Hop New York, which is on VH1 and it's a trash show. Her storylines were centered basically around her pursuing her music career and being with slash breaking up with her fiance who was in prison. Mm, riveting. All of this kind of like turns out well for her. She ends up releasing a few mixtapes and then signs a studio deal and has since, of course, released a couple studio albums. And her first studio album was called Invasion of Privacy, which came out in 2018 and included the hits Bodak Yellow, Bardier Cardi, and I Like It. For that album, she ends up winning Grammy for Best Rap Album of the Year, and she was the only woman to win this as a solo artist and first female rap artist nominated in 15 years. That's huge. So, like... That's why we got to mention she's, it again. You know, that was big. It's big. And then she's done some sou- some she stuff outside of music. Some other stuff, yeah. I mean, she's had some partnerships with MAC Cosmetics, Fashion Nova, and Reebok. Reebok reminds me of my parents in the 80s, but I know that's a comeback. In 2019, she appears in the movie Hustlers and also appears as a judge on a hip-hop competition show called Rhythm and Flow on Netflix. I have not watched that, but no, I'm just going to be honest here. And then she has some drums. Which I feel like you know more about this part, and I don't know if you want to get into it. Otherwise, I'm happy to continue. But I'll, I'll give like a little highlight. This right? is like your thing. I don't want to get too Go into on. it. Go on. So in 2018, Cardi and Nicki Minaj are at a New York Fashion Week after party, and they end up getting in a quite an aggressive a altercation. A little bit of a tussle. These girls like to tussle. Mm-hmm. They actually do. Um, we don't really know what the cause was, right? There's like video clips that have come out since, but Cardi said that it was because Nikki spoke negatively about Cardi as a mom, which like fighting words. I don't even have kids, but if you talk about my in theory kids, I'd still fight you. If I talked about your hypothetical kids right now, you'd fight me. I mean, yeah, probably, maybe, probably, maybe I've tackled you before. It won't be the first time you're going to go down. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And then in 2019, a video comes out from approximately 2016 where Cardi was saying she was drugged, that she drugged Mm -hmm. and robbed men who came into her room for sex while she was a stripper. She denied like ever putting anything into, you know, any of these men's drinks and said that they were all conscious, willing and aware, but that she did take their money because they wasted her time by falling asleep on her. Romantic. Love that for her. (laughs) Yeah, not appropriate, but. And this specifically is not really a good look given the lawsuit that we're about to get into between Cardi and Tasha K. But this is all just a primer for who mm. the queen of this episode is. Yeah. So I could see who you're siding with already, huh? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll share more opinions later. All right. All right. So March 2019, our girl Cardi B sues YouTuber Tasha K and another woman named Star Marie Ebony Jones which we're going to get into in a little bit, but for now, we're just going to focus on Tasha for defamation, invasion of privacy, and intentional infliction of emotional distress in Georgia. I like that the, one of the claims is the same name as her album, Invasion of Privacy. Invasion of Pri- I was wondering if you're going to make that, that, uh, that kind, connection. It's kind of a dad joke, but yeah, oh, Invasion uh, of Privacy. Okay, excuse me. Go ahead. <laughs> you're still funny. It's okay. okay. Um, and as always, judges, before we get into all of the tea in the lawsuit, we need to talk about who Tasha K is, or at least as much as we can find out because, you know, she's a nobody. Yeah. (laughs) I'll say it. Nicole will say it because (laughs) she's Nicole. Um, so her real name is Latasha Kibi. She's 39 and she's a self-proclaimed digital entertainment news reporter which I pulled directly from her website. I just found that entertaining, to be honest. In 2015, she started a YouTube channel called Unwind with Tasha K, where she basically drinks wine and talks about celebrities and entertainment news. As of right now, she has approximately 1 million followers on YouTube, so not an insubstantial amount. Mm-hmm. Uh, unsubstantial? Um, I think I said that wrong. Anyways, it's not a small amount. Um <laughs> She also has her own website and platform, which you can subscribe to, to hear more about celebrity news. I'm not really sure what she's doing on there that's different than YouTube, but it's just more videos. Uh, Her basic plan is $2.99 a month, and her premium plan is $12 a month. So if you're interested, definitely skip that and then go to our Patreon and pay.
pay us instead please and thank you definitely more wholesome content over here we're just so adorable come on um as of 2020 some online reports state that she has a net worth of approximately 500,000 between her assets and income which is primarily through youtube but who knows if that's true i think she hopes it's true considering how this lawsuit goes for her Mm -hmm. but the real takeaway that we want you guys to have at this point is she's known for reporting on salacious celebrity gossip based on tips in quotes that she gets from third parties who may or may not be credible is the issue yeah let's do a strong may or may not may may not yeah Yeah, a little emphasis on that a lot of emphasis on that so enter cardi b So Cardi, okay, so Cardi comes into this and there's like a timeline, right, that obviously unfolds before this lawsuit is filed. So in April 2018, Cardi basically becomes the target of Tasha's affections when Tasha posts her first video about Culture, who is Cardi's daughter, with Offset. Mm -hmm. At that point, Cardi was still pregnant with Culture. And so in the video, Tasha reportedly said that the then unborn Culture may have, in quote, intellectual disabilities due to Cardi's life choices and actions. Again, fighting words because you're talking about somebody as a mother, okay, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. as a parent, generally, While it's not pregnant. just moms, it's just pa- it's parents. Correct. You don't talk about people's Your children. Child. Nope. I think the you real don't. housewives have established you don't talk you about do. the kids. If even the rich white women say that, then you know it's true. And this bitch used to be in a gang. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the bloods. So, so <laughs> Tasha goes on to post more videos about Cardi's past, her love life, including like her being cheated on. Her being cheated and cheated on, cheating on Offset. Yeah, that was a lot. Which is her now husband at that point was just her fiance, maybe boyfriend. I can't remember. Yeah. Among other like not very nice things that we're going to get into. And so then in September 2018, Cardi's team sends a cease and desist letter asking Tasha to remove the defamatory videos. Tasha allegedly refused. Well, she obviously did refuse. Yeah, she She did. Very well (laughs) did refuse. (laughs) Tasha refused and ends up posting about it on her YouTube channel with the letter in hand. Like teasing her, right? Like provoking her. Yes, I was going to say like like egging her on basically. Yes, yes. And allegedly offered Cardi a chance to come on her show for an interview. Like supreme trade-off. You talk about me (laughs) and my unborn child, but sure, I'll come on your your fucking YouTube channel for an interview. Let's kiss and make up because that's what I want to do with my time. Yep. Ridiculous. Okay, so... March 2019, as we said, Cardi sues Tasha K for defamation, invasion of privacy, and intentional infliction of emotional distress and asks for, in quotes, no less than $75,000 in damages. And we'll get to that, but basically she's saying this is the bare minimum I expect. It's quite okay if you want to give me a lot more, (laughs) Mm -hmm. is what that means. So, judges, we've talked about this before. A lot of times plaintiffs are going to use the same set of, in quotes, facts to support different legal claims. So before we get into all of the legal stuff, we want to talk about what kind of facts Cardi is using to support her legal claims. And when we say facts, we mean literally in a complaint that you file with the court, there's going to be what's called a facts section where you pull what happened in your, I guess it's it, sometimes subjective, yeah, objective. Say, sometimes it's like, it, this is what, what I think happened. Yes. And, and then sometimes it depends on evidence, right? Mm-hmm. Is it refutable mm-hmm. is it not mm-hmm. but it's the fact section is just meant to be like the things that happened yeah really should be what it's called the things you think happened or may have actually happened mm-hmm. section yeah um in cardi's initial finally excuse me filing she asserted that tasha had posted at least 23 videos about her over the previous 14 months which rose to at least 38 about 40 videos by the time cardi's team amended their filing in November 2020. So what that means is she continued to produce more videos even after Cardi initially filed her complaint against her. So like you said, Nicole, the cease and desist, she's like, fuck you, I'm going to do what I want. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to continue making these videos. And in these videos, Cardi says that Tasha made, in quotes, degrading and harassing remarks about her and accused Tasha of starting a campaign to destroy her reputation with, in quotes, knowingly false statements. So Cardi goes on to specifically point to many of these false statements Tasha told about her in these videos, including a lot of things. So I'm going to need you to help me out, girl. We're going to have to do like a... You know, you take the first half or we do a back and forth because there's quite a few things that she's that Cardi is saying Tasha claimed that were not true. Disclaimer mm-hmm. for the sound bites. Cardi, we don't think these are true. Do not sue us. We're just reporting <laughs> for, on the facts. For the sound bites. These are things Tasha said yes, about Cardi. We did not. These are in the complaint. Mm-hmm. These are in the complaint that 
uh, that Cardi filed and in the videos that Tasha yes. posted on her YouTube channel. Yep. All right. All the disclaimers. Yep. Ready to go? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So Tasha claimed Cardi was a prostitute, mm -hmm. that she took drugs. Um, she specifically named Molly and cocaine, that she contracted STIs, um, herpes and HPV specifically. Um, okay, I'll do this one. Fine. Um, I was really hoping you'd take this one on, but I guess I got it. That she performed sex acts on herself with beer bottles while she was working as a stripper and performed sex acts on herself with beer bottles taken from pedestrians that she just meet on the street. She claimed that she would see a pedestrian who apparently was drinking beer. She'd take that beer bottle from that pedestrian. She'd perform a sex act on sex sex act on herself. Then she would drink from the bottle and then hand that bottle back to the pedestrian. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is as detailed as this video gets. Mm -hmm. And now I'm done because you made me say that part. <laughs> okay. So your turn. She also Tasha also claimed that Cardi wasn't faithful to Offset and that Offset wasn't faithful to her, as you mentioned. She claimed that uh, her daughter Culture would get herpes after Cardi kissed her on her face and on her mouth. And as we previously mentioned, she claimed that Culture, Cardi's daughter, might be born with intellectual disabilities, basically alluding to the drugs that she said Cardi was taking. Taking. So we watched some of the videos. I mean, yeah. so I actually watched. Uh, Before it was taken down. Yes, I'm so envious. I, I happened to catch it. There was a vi the video that really started this all with Tasha K and the Star Marie woman. Mm -hmm. Basically, Star Marie was saying that like they lived together at one point. And that she saw Cardi using drugs and that maybe she like forgot because of all the drugs that she's used and basically talking about all these men she may or may not have slept with and the STDs she picked up. And it was really like deplorable is the best yeah. way that I would describe it. I think it's not true, right? Okay, so there's that. But even if it was true, if that was somebody who was in your life at one point, whether you're on good terms or not, to say all of these things about somebody and their children is just like it just it, I couldn't imagine being so upset by anything to do that behind somebody's back yeah it's embarrassing at the very least and especially for somebody who's a global superstar right, right. like she's not like your girl from down the street and like you guys have this little like right. shithole youtube channel that nobody sees <laughs> like you're talking about somebody who the world now knows and I'd imagine for Cardi, she's a rap artist and already has to deal with a lot of stereotypes about what that means mm -hmm. to be a female rapper nonetheless. A rapper in general, a female rapper, a black female rapper, and all the things that come with it. And I didn't catch that video because by the time I clicked on the link, it was down, and we'll talk about that. But the one video I was able to catch before it was taken down was one of Tasha K's live videos that she did on Instagram that then got, I think someone took a screenshot because, you know, there's always people mm -hmm. trying to take receipts she did about a year ago while the trial was actually ongoing because the trial's been going on for like four oh, wow. years yeah. right so 2018 now. yeah, yeah. almost she, four has like what march yes <clears throat> yeah and she's going off like she's tearing apart cardi's appearance her relationship and at certain points she still she'll acknowledge that she's a gossip channel and she even said and i caught it like this is literally me re-watching the video for this episode she said 98 percent of her content has sources in quotes including her having cardi b's bff as a source but that she doesn't mind if one to two stories are fake if it's for entertainment That's so cool. she just doesn't care right mm -hmm. like this is hurtful even if you were a private person and someone was saying these things about you and i mm -hmm. think we often forget that just because somebody's a celebrity or famous it doesn't mean that they're not human to have feelings so Pretty deplorable, like you said. And I think to your point, right, like I, what is not lost to me with Cardi is that when she started her career, I didn't, I never saw her Vine thing. I was not a Vine user, but I did see like clips of her on Love and Hip Hop. And I think she was always, you know, she, she's very unapologetically herself. Yeah. And that includes being like very Spanish girl from the Bronx. And like, you know, she just, she, she's like fl all flair. It's a right. lot happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. And so I High think. Energy a lot of energy and she's like she makes jokes and she's a little crass and like all the things people love about her mm -hmm. are now being used against her in like the most nasty ways and so yeah. i just feel bad that like she had to you know yeah terrible basically overcome her circumstances for this to be like what happens next completely agree so i don't this is going to be ever changing everybody so by the time we record and by by the time this gets posted some videos are still available on tasha's page or other youtubers pages but they're probably going to be coming down so i mean we can't say what will be up by the time even right now like mm -hmm. it's changing by the minute um it's pretty likely that the court will order that all these videos come down mm -hmm. um but TBD. So before we dive into all the legal stuff, I want to take a moment to go back and kind of briefly mention this Star Marie Ebony Jones person that we've kind of been alluding to. So as we talked about, 
in the initial filing that Cardi made in court in Georgia, she actually made this woman, Star Marie, a co-defendant um, in that March 2019 lawsuit. We don't like we don't know much about her, even less than we do know about Tasha. Mm -hmm. But we do know, like you said, that she claimed to have met Cardi in 2013 and claimed to be her roommate for a time in New York, um, which Cardi has adamantly denied. She said, I've never met you in my life. Mm -hmm. And when Star Marie was later asked about why Cardi couldn't remember her, Star Marie responded with, in quotes, she takes a lot of drugs, so it could be a memory lapse, and I'm okay with that, which is what you said. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're just setting the picture for everybody about this Star Marie person. So in September 2018, she posted a video on Instagram Live disparaging Cardi, accusing Cardi of having herpes, doing Molly, cocaine, and engaging in prostitution. So basically the same kind of stuff that Tasha K was doing. She went on to respond to others in her comments on Instagram that Cardi was, in quotes, just a Grammy-nominated prostitute running around spreading her herpes. About a week later, Tasha and Star Marie then team up and post a video together. This is the one that you said yep. you watched yeah. and I didn't watch because it was already taken down by the time I clicked on the link, where they basically just continue to bash Cardi. They accuse her of having STDs, like we said, specifically mouth herpes and using Molly and cocaine. And this is a, a fun fact, I guess, in a way. It's a petty fact, honestly. We should have like a petty fact section, actually, yeah, of our should. pod. So in Cardi's filing, her lawyers were quick to point out that this video had approximately 4 million views at the time, and they claimed that this was substantially more than Tasha typically gets. They pointed out, literally, in this filing, that her previous video only had 223,000 views, and that of a total of 236 videos on her YouTube channel, only nine had more than a million views love that shade so shady and the fact that this is now coming more prevalent in court where you know you have these lawyers combing over social media mm -hmm. is just going to become a thing more <laughs> yeah. and more and judges are going to be looking at this stuff more and more so basically what they're trying to say is that it is clear tasha and star marie that you're using cardi for clout and mm -hmm. views mm -hmm. like none of your other stuff is nope, fucking banging fuck. yeah. yeah no one cares yep so anyway, back to the case. Cardi originally included Star Marie in the suit with Tasha, but ends up removing her ends, and ends up filing the lawsuit against her in New York. April 2021, Cardi was granted a motion for default judgment because Star Marie blew off the case and never showed up to court, never responded, nothing. I love that for her. So if you don't respond to a lawsuit, and she was lawfully served, mm -hmm. um, because some people might think she never knew about it, but she was lawfully served, and you never respond, there's going to be what's called a default judgment, which means you're automatically at fault. Yeah, you're That's what you guilty. get. Yeah, yep. you're guilty. Yep. And in the judgment, the court ordered Star Marie to remove that video because in this joint video, they each posted it to their channels. Mm -hmm. So she had to remove it from hers. And they basically said the statements were defamatory. I mean, it's a default judgment, right? So they don't even, they're so like, like, work through the you're facts. guilty. Yeah, yeah you're yep. guilty automatically. Yep. So based on what we can find, the judge didn't award Cardi any damages, but we don't know if this is still under review. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So with all of that being said, let's break down Cardi's claims against Tasha K. So like you said, there was a claim for defamation, one for false light, and one for intentional affliction of emotional distress. So defamation, we've talked about it before, but again, to Alexa's point, we haven't really gotten super deep into it. But defamation essentially means a false statement was made that purports to be true and harms someone's reputation. And so if the person suing for defamation is a public figure like Cardi B, which she obviously is, the law requires that any statement has like is basically made with malice as opposed to like private persons, which basically have to prove negligence, which we've talked many times about before. Right. But so malice specifically means that the defamatory statement made by the per made by the person who they're accusing was of defamation. knowingly false, essentially, yeah. or they basically like spoke with a reckless disregard for the truth. So Cardi here will have to prove that when Tasha made those statements about Cardi, Tasha knew that they were false and or didn't care about the truth, essentially. Right. So in other words, jurors will have to figure out whether Tasha had a good faith basis for making the statements that she did about Cardi, i.e. like, you know, did she do any research or investigation into the claims? Like who was, you know, the person giving her this information? If it's, you know, somebody off the fucking street in right. Texas, less likely to, you know, maybe be related to Cardi and like have right. shared a room with her. Right, right. But so essentially, like they have to apply all of the facts to the actual law 
of mm-hmm. defamation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, it's there, this one is all over the place. The timeline, right? Like we said, it's four years going. So this is fact specific as most lawsuits are, mm-hmm. but basically all the things that we said that she was a prostitute, that she has herpes, all these things, because Cardi is the one suing, we'll get into like the defenses. It's kind of an awkward, this is an awkward outline for us to talk about. Cause I'm like, there's this whole there's picture so things, thing. Yeah. Like what is the best, how is the, how do we present this in the best way possible? But I think the takeaway here is that when judges, you're listening to us, keep in mind the different things that we're going to talk about that Tasha K ends up saying on the stand, which I think is the most incriminating thing Mm -hmm. because keep in mind, like you said, Cardi is a public figure. Mm -hmm. So we need to prove that Tasha K essentially had it out for her. And most of us would probably say, if your sources aren't credible and you're not checking them and calling someone a prostitute and herpes and you're kissing your daughter and you're going to give her herpes and your daughter is going to be born with in quotes, um, basically intellectual disabilities, intellectual yeah. disabilities that probably seems malicious. It's not right? great. Does that seem malicious? That's yeah, what you're going to ask yourself. So. Yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah, but I guess we'll be patient. We'll see. We've We're got, lawyers. We've got more to come through. We want to be a little more objective. Yeah. So let's see. Okay, so it's worth noting that there are two types of defamations, which are slander and libel. So slander is when someone defames you through an oral statement, whereas libel is when somebody defames you through a written statement. Often, you know, libel is recognized as more serious because it's memorialized and it's probably got the chance of reaching more people, right? Because it's Mm -hmm. in writing or... Lasting longer. Yes. And more people could see it. More people basically have access to Mm -hmm. it. And so, you know, the injuries and the damages can be the hardest to prove in these defamation cases because they're basically saying, like, you have to show a harm to your reputation. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. some examples of injuries would be, like, losing brand partnerships or losing sponsorships, losing business, losing followers that generate revenue, all of which, like, were probably easier quantify, probably more easily quantifiable for Cardi than, like, the average person. Right. Right. Because she's, she's got the numbers behind her. Right. But it's worth noting that there are actually several defenses to defamation claims. So one is truth. Truth is basically an absolute defense to, you know, a de- defamation claim because mm-hmm. it negates the claim that there was ever a false statement. Mm-hmm. You can't say there was a false statement and it's true. Correct. So if you're telling the truth, dumb, done, done. you're out, done, mm-hmm. you're out. One is statement of opinion. So defamation is a false statement of fact. So sharing an opinion would not be defamatory. And no, this can be harder to prove, right? Because the jury is basically going to have to review the facts around the statement to decide whether it was actually presented as an opinion or whether it was presented as a fact. So saying, I don't know. I think Cardi takes drugs. Yeah. Would probably not rise to the level of defamation. Yeah. Could still go to court. You could mm-hmm. still sue me over it and try, mm-hmm. but not going to be as strong of a case. And I worth noting here, this is how a lot of tabloids are able to get away with such yep. crazy yeah. headlines, right? Everybody noticed that when you see a crazy headline, like you look at it, is there a question mark at the mm-hmm. end, right? <laughs> yeah. Even your girls here will sometimes do their podcast episode titles with a question mark for yeah. that reason, yeah. right? So yeah. um, it, it has to be clear. And there, there have been instances where people have, it, that's a gray area of, is this an opinion or is this mm-hmm. fact? Mm-hmm. And that'll go to the jurors to say, well, did you think this was an opinion or did it seem like a statement of fact? Like if you as a reasonable person heard this thing, would yeah. you think that it was an opinion or would you think that somebody was stating a fact? Correct. And these tabloids, just so everybody knows, has they usually have a lot of money mm-hmm. and a lot of lawyers mm-hmm. geared up and ready, which is why it can be so hard for celebrities to battle tabloids and it's not worth it in the end. It yep. doesn't mean that they should, it doesn't mean that what they're doing isn't defamatory, but it just not, it may not be worth it for the celebrity. Yeah. So anyways. So another defense is consent. You know, of course, if somebody gives their consent to certain statements being made, they likely then would not be able to sue them for those statements unless there was some other you know, kind of issue at hand, like coercion. Like if you were coerced into giving your consent, Mm -hmm. you know, it's obviously probably not going to stand in court. Another defense is privilege. So that's if the information is being shared in a privileged situation. So for example, if things are said between spouses, if you're like, you're a prostitution whore to your husband, (laughs) if it's just the two of you in a room and like nobody, you know, leaves the room to say it, probably not defamatory. It's probably not ruining your reputation. Yep. Yep. And the last one is statute of limitations, which we've talked about many times before. So basically, with all legal claims, there's a time frame within which a plaintiff must bring that claim. And then, of course, it depends on each state's laws. In Georgia, it's worth noting where Cardi brought the suit, the statute of limitations is one year from the alleged statement. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if this video started in 2018 and she brought that suit in 2019, she... Outside of, yeah, 2020. Maybe yeah. Yep. Uh huh. Twenty. What about twenty twenty? You said twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen. I was like, well, technically it could. 
It was like March 2018. Well, and then yes, April I, I presume it was. I'm just saying technically. Since, her, since the lawsuit went through. <laughs> but go for it. Okay, okay, next claim. Invasion of light, privacy, invasion of false light. It's, nope. There's so much. You invasion of privacy and false light. False light. Yeah, you that's go. a long one. That's a long one. <laughs> you go. We got a lot to talk about on this episode. A lot of tongue so, twisters. There really is. So false light is essentially when a person or business publishes false or misleading information about a person that would be offensive to a reasonable person. And that reasonable person is who? I don't know. They don't exist. But jurors will be tasked with figuring out who that is. This is very similar to defamation. And in fact, because it is so similar, many states don't recognize false slight claims they kind of just expect people to depend on the defamation claim but the states that do offer it often differentiate it from defamation by asserting that false light is meant to protect a person from the offense of or sorry from being offended or basically embarrassed right so i like to think of it as defamation has to do with reputation whereas false light has to do with are you embarrassed Mm -hmm. by these things coming out as a result of these misleading or untrue implications and here i think it's pretty evident without us even having to go into too much detail that if you were being accused of um you know having done drugs and and having mouth herpes and giving it to your daughter and you are cheating on your significant other and your significant other is cheating on you that probably be very embarrassing embarrassing. i mean that and that alone ask chloe kardashian i think she'd say she's very embarrassed um well there's been so many allegations so there's yeah shout out to the tristan thompson episode everybody and then we have oh sorry yeah do you want to you want me to take it you all right no i'll go okay (laughs) the last one is intentional infliction of emotional distress also a tongue twister but somehow did it Um, So this basically depends on the jurisdiction, but generally intentional infliction of emotional distress is a type of mental suffering or anguish caused by, you know, purposeful or super reckless content, content, conduct, conduct. could be content actually in this case, (laughs) fine, but I meant conduct, reckless conduct, or the person who causes the harm is almost certain to cause emotional distress. And so most emotional distress claims require you to have suffered physical harm as a result of, you know, the incident, including in Georgia, again, where Cardi is suing. But it's sometimes possible to win without physical harm, but usually like in very extenuating circumstances. So an example is a parent who witnesses their kid get hit and killed by a drunk driver. Like right. you as the parent did not suffer any emotional, I mean, sorry, physical harm, like uh-huh. the car didn't hit uh-huh. you, but uh-huh. it's so great with all of the emotions, et cetera, that, they, that the court will allow that to proceed. Right. So to win, the person would have to show evidence of suffering, like medical reports showing you suffered from ulcers or headaches or, you know, reports from like a psychiatrist or therapist and any prescriptions. And of course, the more severe the incident, the higher the likelihood of winning. And so for timing, basically, like the longer you've suffered, the more credible your claim will likely be to the court. Right. And so here, you know, Cardi said that she suffered emotional distress and she says that she suffered anxiety and mental anguish and other things that we'll get into, like as we kind of break down what's happened in the trial thus far. Mm -hmm. And to your point in Cardi's filing, she states definitively and affirmatively she's never been a prostitute or a user of cocaine or Molly and denied ever having herpes and i believe hpv too which was another one that which is was like kind of random because hpv is so yeah. common it's, <laughs> it's kind of like a cold happens. these days I yeah think. <laughs> so reminder because a claim of for defamation is based on false statements having been made cardi is going on record via her filing to say that the statements tasha kate made were false Cardi even went so far as to provide STD testing records in her initial filing she was coming to get ahead of this truth here's the truth yeah Negative, negative, negative. Yeah. So, you know, some people might ask, like, how do we know Cardi's actually telling the truth here, right? So she said, she said, the thing is, presumably, to go through the trouble of making this this lawsuit happen. Lots of trouble and lots of money. A lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of stress. Mm Mm-hmm. You, we have to presume that the she's feeling pretty confident about her case and that she can prove that these statements are false, mm-hmm. which really actually sucks, and we'll talk about that morality aspect. Mm-hmm. But another thing to consider at this point is that if she presumably it moves forward to trial, she is now under oath, mm-hmm. and she lies, she could commit 
perjury. Yep. Perjury, telling a lie in court after taking an oath of truth. And if you commit perjury, there can be very, very serious consequences. Courts do not like when you commit perjury, including probation, fines. Sometimes, I mean, they might do some little jail time, but, like a you know. A couple days in jail, but yeah. yeah. But hey, who wants to spend the night on a bench? Yeah, yeah. just to take a break <laughs> yeah. from work. <laughs> I mean, nobody could email me. Yeah, that's true. So in spring of 2019, Tasha ends up denying all wrongdoing and even filed her own countersuit against Cardi for assault and intentional affliction of emotional distress and asked for $1 million in damages. So substantially more than Cardi asked for, given all of the facts that Cardi had. Yeah, she wanted 75000 She was like at least seventy five, And this lady yep. was like, $1 million, please, right. at least. Right. Wonder what she's after. So Tasha basically says that Cardi trashed her publicly and defamed Tasha by saying that Tasha made up fake stories, which led to her being threatened by Cardi, her friends, her fans, etc. And so Tasha said that she suffered from also anxiety, panic, humiliation, and depression. But just two months later in July of 2019, the judge ultimately dismissed Tasha's claims and said that she did not produce any evidence to back up her claims. And instead, she only made allegations and failed to show that Cardi had any liability, like with respect to the threats that Tasha basically said she was getting. Right. Right. So fuck off, Tasha. Stupid. November 2021, the judge orders that Cardi release certain medical records. Cardi's legal team responds and says that they welcome the judge's ruling and will share their her STD results from a California hospital. They also note that she had already provided this proof, like we said, but they'll share again. And to me, I just have to take a pause to be like, the morality here is so fucked up. Excuse my French. But like... The fact that, like, the victim in this situation has to then go out of her way, especially about something that is very embarrassing and personal, Mm -hmm. to go get tested. Now it's in the public. It it didn't have to be. I think these were initially sealed, but Mm -hmm. now it's public. Um, These test results, I don't know. It's just so personal. And now you're just putting on blast. I agree. I guess if I were her, I would think, like, this is the easiest thing that I can do to show that Tasha was lying. Correct. Because you, you probably can't submit proof that Offset was not cheating. You can't, maybe, right. I don't, maybe you couldn't submit proof. I don't fucking know how one would do this. Maybe, I, there's no, you can't prove that you're not like a prostitute. You can't right. prove that you never did, you know, Molly or cocaine. But, you know, this was like a low hanging one where she was like, I can go take a test right now. Right. And definitively say that I have never had herpes or HPV. Right. So I get it. It's not great, right? It's like. This is a justice system issue. It's, it's not ideal. I think mm-hmm. it sucks. I, you know, it, all due respect to Cardi for saying like I'm gonna take that L and just submit this so I can right. move on I could yeah exactly I could just imagine she's already upset that yeah. this is even happening and yeah. they're like fine I'll go take this STD test and now I'll submit it and now this man who I've never met who's the judge presiding over my case gets to also look at my medical records agreed ridiculous agreed. anyway I don't disagree December 8th you know, said that the judge says he's reviewed the records and found that they weren't helpful to the defendant, Mm -hmm. in quotes. So presumably that means she tested negative. Yeah. And again, (laughs) not looking good for Tasha K. Yeah. So January of this year, the trial begins. And this is where things get extremely interesting if they're not interesting enough for you judges already. So around the same time that this started, Tasha's team files a defense exhibit list with it that has 125 pieces of evidence disputing Cardi's claim. It includes pictures of Cardi with a cold sore, a video where she referred to herself as a prostitute, a video of her on Instagram Live discussing her rapping about prostitution and drugs and how I think there was like another clip about how everything she raps about is true, Mm -hmm. right? So they're just basically trying to point to the fact that like they're trying to prove it is true by using, I, I think... Just poor evidence. Like, just because I say everything I rap about is true doesn't mean it's definitively true. Right. I mean, people lie all the time. Literally all the time. All the rappers lie. It's just a very interesting strategy, in my opinion. Yeah. And then in early January, Cardi takes the stand and she testifies that she felt extremely suicidal and defeated and depressed after the claims. She even says that she didn't want to sleep with her husband. Offset said that she suffered from fatigue, weight loss, migraines, and anxiety. She added that the herpes rumor led to fans questioning a photo of Cardi kissing her daughter Culture on the lips and allegedly led to people calling her Herpes B instead of Cardi B all over her Instagram. So now you have these people just commenting everywhere on her Instagram. She said that she went to therapy as a result of all this. And 
you know, judges, if this isn't evident enough, this is speaking to multiple claims here, but specifically the intentional infliction of emotional distress claim, right? Mm -hmm. So she's saying, as a result of the things that you've done, Mm -hmm. now look at, I have anxiety, depression, right? She's Mm -hmm. going to therapy. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing damages in my head as I hear these things. I mean, even weight loss, right? Like, Mm. I wonder if that falls into like a physical... Mm-hmm. harm category because it's like a physical change to your body i don't know yeah. it's kind of i don't actually don't know if that. you're bedridden and you can't work because you're so um distraught by everything that's happening i mean if you're constantly being harassed and mm-hmm. this is the comments that you're seeing and it's about your daughter and your husband i mean yeah. your family it's so personal it's, it's not just about you now yeah um and the rest of the trial doesn't go so well for tasha you know unsurprisingly so interestingly when tasha was being questioned by cardi's attorneys tasha initially admits that she posted lies about cardi to generate money for her business but then she ultimately backtracks on these on these admissions once her attorneys basically continue her examination but before that backtracking she actually admitted that she talked about cardi because it drove up views and likes and comments which you know as most of us know also drive up advertising and engagement all that And she also admitted that she knew Star Marie Ebony Jones's claims were false, but posted that video anyways. And she said that the only way she'd take down the videos would be due to a court order because they're responsible for her rating and revenue increase, essentially. And Cardi's lawyers basically provided evidence that Tasha's YouTube channel increased by 340 percent in the fall of 2018, which is fucking massive. When she started talking about Cardi. That's a lot. It's a huge uptick. So what her lawyers are trying to prove is you're only talking about her because you want to make money. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about that malice part, right? You had it out for Cardi. Well, if that was not malice enough, here is a little bit more. Tasha told jurors that she thinks it's funny to say that people have STDs, even AIDS, particularly if they were, particularly if they were reckless in becoming infected. Smart. So, like, if that's not malice, I don't know what it is. Like, you're just, you're a shit person. I would be so frustrated to have her as a client. Oh, I would quit. I'd be like, shut yeah. the fuck up. We're going home. Yeah, you're losing this case yeah. for me. Thank yep. you. That was a big inhale from both of us. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Additionally, Cardi's lawyers played several of Tasha's videos for the jury where she said things like, in quotes, I knew that shit was fake. I wanted the money. This is a business. This is called ratings. End quote. A new one. Quotes. All of this is publicity. This is fun for me. End quote. She'd take... She said she'd take down the videos if Cardi paid her for the residual income she'd miss out by taking said videos down, but then later said that she'd continue to post no matter what, and that she didn't care about Cardi's feelings or the lawsuit, and that she didn't, in quotes, give a fuck if they put a gag order on me, it's gossip bitch, end quote. And interestingly, in one of her videos, which I think we may have mentioned already, but she said, her word is fact, and that 98% of what she posts is accurate. I wonder how she does her stats and like how she figures that out. But 98% (laughs) of the stuff she does is accurate. Um, And then she goes on to admit that she didn't actually ever try to corroborate a lot of the rumors about Cardi before publishing them. And that even if she had evidence to the contrary, she would still publish the lies to drive up ratings. These are in videos, people. Videos that were portrayed. She does not care. They were played to the jurors. Yeah. Not great. It's very incriminating evidence. Not good at all. Cardi's lawyers also present an Instagram comment she left where she said, in quotes, keep sending the lies and watch me air them too!" exclamation point. I'm not feeling so good if I'm her lawyer right now. I'm just going to say that. So all of this is just smoking gun evidence for Cardi because reminder, she has to prove malice. She has to prove that she just didn't care about the truth. That she had it out for Cardi. So these are the things that where we've talked about defamation cases, it can be hard to prove because to your point, how do you prove you weren't a prostitute? Mm -hmm. How do you prove you've never done drugs? Mm -hmm. Here's all these fucking shots, these stills of me not doing drugs. Mm -hmm. Well, can you prove that? (laughs) I? You're right. That's a picture from every day of your life. It's so hard. And I was, you know, like that's why too tabloids can get away with like really eccentric lies. Like Brad Pitt is an alien. Well, how do you prove Brad Pitt isn't an alien? Like, what is an alien, Mm -hmm. right? Just you think of these things and it's it's so hard to do. So she really Mm -hmm. effed this up for herself by saying these things on the stand, by saying these things in videos that she posted. I mean, she really handed this one over to Cardi. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm on my soapbox. I'm so upset. I just so upset. That's okay, girl. The trial only lasts two weeks. Shocking. Two weeks. With all of the evidence that you just said, I'm so shocked. Two weeks, my friend. 
So where do things stand now? So in the last week of January, Cardi was arrested. Uh, arrested. Oh, my God. She's, I just just wheel me out now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long week. In the last week of January, Cardi was awarded $1.25 million for the case. And as a breakdown, she got $1 million in general damages and $250,000 in medical expenses. And that's, you know, most likely for like her therapy and any medications that she may have taken to treat, you know, her anxiety and her depression that she mentioned. Mm-hmm. And so Tasha, Tasha and her company, Kebby Studios LLC, was found liable on all three counts of defamation, invasion of privacy through portrayal in a false light, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. After this is announced, Tasha basically goes to her Instagram, Classic Place, saying that she, her husband, and her attorneys fought really hard and that she would be getting back to work. Can't fucking wait, Tasha. Mm -hmm. And she also says, in quotes, I forgot to thank all of the viewers for all of your support. In this business, this is part of the protocol. Everyone in my seat has been through this, and this ain't the last. This comes with the territory. See y'all Friday. It's long overdue. Okay, Mm -mm. first of all, Mm -mm. very curious to see what she says on f- that Friday mm-hmm. we'll have to report back with videos I don't know we on will. TikTok or somewhere but like what a disaster it just really upsets me because I feel I feel like this is just she's a troll yeah right and even we don't have nearly the amount of fame that Cardi B has and we've been trolled and even mm-hmm. in our little private mm-hmm. lives it's so frustrating because we're just out here trying to live our lives yeah. trying to do this podcast yeah. we mean well and this stuff, it does hurt. And I'd imagine if it was about my daughter and my marriage and my relationships and me even, it's just, it's so not mm-hmm. cool. So I'm like, I hate these like these troll YouTubers who glorify like, who cares? I just want to make my money. Yeah. It's just really messed up. This morality is out the roof here on this one. Lack of, I should say. Well, so the day after Cardi, it's the 1.25 million. The jurors actually increased the damages owed to Cardi to 4.1 million. 4.1. And so the additional money added on was basically due to punitive damages, which basically means to punish Tasha for what she's been doing, and attorney's fees that were awarded to Cardi because obviously Cardi has been paying, you know, out of the fucking ass for these legal fees. Quite a bit. So specifically, there were $1 million in punitive damages for Tasha and then $500,000 and punitive damages for her company, Kebby Studios. And then she must basically reimburse Cardi for personal lawsuit costs, which comes to around $1.4 million. Pay those lawyers' fees. Enjoy. I love that for them. So the final verdict, again, is approximately $4.1 million, which Cardi's attorneys recently confirmed. So in Cardi's statement, after all this happened, she says, after almost four years of repeated libel and slander against me, being able to walk away from this victorious brings me great happiness. I appreciate Judge Ray for conducting a fair and impartial trial. I am grateful for the jury and their careful deliberation over the past two weeks. I am profoundly grateful for the hard work and support of my legal team, et cetera, et cetera. She thanks her fans and her friends. The important part is that she says, I have never taken for granted the platform that my fame allows me to have, which is why over for over three years, I dedicated every resource I had to seek justice and not just justice for me. The truth is that the intentional harm that was done to me is done to countless others every day. The only difference between me and the high schooler who's being cyber bullied and lied on by their classmates is the money and resources that I have access to. We collectively have to say enough is enough. We can no longer be a society that turns a blind eye to blatant lies. Can, mm-hmm. I mean, she goes, there's like a lot more that there's she says, lot, but like, lot, I really yep. thought that, listen, it's not just about her. I get that. Like for her, this is very personal, but I, I definitely hear her point that like social media has been, just become a breeding ground for people to say whatever the fuck they feel like and think that mm-hmm. there's no consequences. Mm-hmm. And like when you're saying certain things about people, you have to know that you're putting yourself at risk for legal issues. Yeah, it's, it's just rude. I, I often think, how many of you, if we were face-to-face, would say this stuff? Because mm-hmm. even as, again, I'm going to point to us because it's I'm narcissistic <laughs> and it's me. But even on our TikTok, we're, we're just trying to post about whatever legal issue came out. I think recently, today, someone said, this is stupid. You're stupid. And I was like, we laugh about it, right? <laughs> but I imagine if, if you're 14 years old and you're just posting on TikTok and you get that, that might really fuck with you. And I can imagine how as those comments escalate and they get just more terrible, that's going to weigh on you. Or the people who co- who vo- who um, commented on the complex video that we were just le- law students. Yeah, that too. Bro, if I wish I was a law student. <laughs> My life was so much easier then. If I was, I'd drop out and <laughs> yeah. say, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I just think as women, right, especially women of color, it's just we have to be perfect at all times. And even when we are, we still are subject to so many things. I mean, usually we're 
comedic i want to believe but this is like just hits close to home i feel bad for her and i don't think people realize words have a huge impact Mm -hmm. on people if you don't like somebody or something and you want to give a critique that's constructive go for it but if it's just to bash them yeah do you really need to say that yeah like what does that do for you yep so after this increase, Tasha's attorneys, the increase meaning the damages, Tasha's attorneys issue a statement saying that they're, they disagree, of course, and are going to be fine an, ap- an appeal. Shocking. Shocking. Yeah. So they're basically saying, um, hold on, we want a second chance. Yeah. And of course, Tasha's team can appeal this decision if they want. She did post the uh, most annoying video ever, which I couldn't actually get through. I think, did you watch it all? I did like five seconds. I was like, I need my brain cells. More than I did. I really I, needed those brain cells I heard today. her voice and I was like, nope, yeah. not going to do it. So she calls the case a conspiracy and says that she wouldn't change anything about she han- how she handled things. Can I just, I just want to stop. I just want to stop. <laughs> when she said conspiracy, I was like, mm, what's the conspiracy here? You actually posted these videos. Right. We have the evidence, but right. this is not like some made up thing. Right. We're not like, you know. Fake news. We're not opining on whether aliens are real. You posted these videos and they yeah. were f- false. That's not a conspiracy. Fake news. She just reminds me. It's fake news. I don't care. Okay. That's that's me saying that. Still fake news. Okay. You doctored the video yep. of me saying that. She says that she was shocked by the verdict, says she wouldn't waver from her personal beliefs and quotes about things that wreak havoc on our society while she pushed out fake tears. Probably crocodile tears. It was like, you know, when people cry and there's like no tears yeah. and you're like, mm, I don't know if I'm believing this right now. Uh, she ends up taking the videos down to show, I don't know, is it a good faith um, effort to take them down? The court didn't ask for it yet, but I'm sure they will. They were going to. They're all, yeah. they're all down, basically. Yeah. I think she realized, not good. But then... Late last night, or I mean, depending on when you're listening to this, it's our last <laughs> night, but it's not your last night. No, I'm just going to be guys. honest. But late <laughs> at night, <laughs> she posted on her social media recently saying, in quotes, no lies were told on anyone. I never admitted to lying about anything. No one threw anyone under the bus. Mostly everything reported was a lie from the inside. The court transcripts will be available to the public soon. So now she's saying everything that's been reported, and by the way, the things, the sources we've pulled from are from like reputable legal sources, like Law 360, which I only used in law school. My thing is, uh, my girl, uh, my guy, even if maybe all of the facts that came out of the courtroom or like the, you know, the tellings of what happened in the courtroom weren't completely true, you are still on the hook for $4.1 million. And okay. that tells me what the fuck I need to know. Okay. That tells me that Judge Ray. Mm -hmm. And the jury thought that you were a stupid, guilty (laughs) biatch. And so I feel like nobody really needs to hear your side of the story, my friend. Honestly, that's not untrue. (laughs) And we don't have the time to get into it. But just know, everybody, that Judge Ray had it with this woman. There are multiple instances, and I love it when a lawyer gets petty. But I mostly love it when a judge gets petty. And there were quite a few petty moments for Judge Ray where he was like, I am not having it today, (laughs) Tasha (laughs) Kay. He literally was like, at some points, he had to tell the woman, like, stop and answer the question because you're wasting my time. Yeah. He had to tell her that. Well, but I guess Tasha, Big T, is saying that that wasn't true. And we're going to see when the transcripts come out. Love the honesty. But what's Cardi B up to? On the other side of the globe slash on the other side of the money, mm. Cardi is doing much bigger and better things. She recently pledged to cover the funeral and burial costs for the victims of the Bronx apartment building fire, mm-hmm. which killed 17 people. Reminder, she's from the Bronx, so she feels a great attachment. Right. And, you know, a lot of people and families have basically come out and said that it's so helpful because funerals are expensive. And so right. and for her to do this for strangers is like incredible for her. Completely agree. So moral of the story is Cardi is out here fighting for this, the high schoolers who get bullied online, saving, you know, people expenses, paying for funerals. And so go Cardi. We stay Congrats. team Carti over here. Congrats on the win. Yep. Mm-hmm. And if anyone has an issue with our bias, then you could just stop listening. Yeah. Cancel. Um, a brief summary of things we talked about. Don't be a troll. How about that? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that that's my also my summary and my unsolicited advice don't be a troll my advice is put your money where your fucking mouth is if you cannot back up your statements with money in the bank then you should shut the fuck up so tasha do not say anything else because mm-hmm. we know you don't have the 4.1 for cardi so <laughs> you might not want to get any more added good luck with those rent checks next month though yeah please and thank you all right uh q a segment we got a question from a judgy which high? High-profile divorce, would you like to have been a lawyer on and for which spouse? 
This is a good question for you because you said if you weren't doing entertainment, you would be doing divorce law. So what say you, Nicole? I want to say Kim and Kanye, but they're, that's just getting way too messy and toxic. So no thank you on that one. Um, There'd be a lot to do. Hmm. I'm having a hard time thinking, actually. Maybe Jennifer Aniston and Ben Affleck. Just to be like, you're a cheating piece of shit. And here's why we're going to give my client everything she wants. So I would obviously rep Jennifer. Brad Pitt. Who did I say? Oh. Ben Affleck. Yeah. yeah sorry. I was like, hmm. <laughs> I was like Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner. Another white guy with a B name. Jennifer Sorry, Garner. Yo. Wait, which one? Which Jennifer? No, Jennifer Aniston. Okay. Also Ben Affleck and Jennifer Jennifer Garner because I'm not here for the shit that he was talking about her recently. He's Ben he's, Affleck. Do better. Jen Jen G is a sweet lady. It seems yeah. she's a sweet white lady. Yeah. L- let her cook on her Instagram videos. Yes, I'm a fan because I watched Alias. Um, I loved her in Alias as a kid. I just don't like that he was like, oh, I'm so much happier now that I'm I not know. with her. Like, shut the fuck up. She literally took your dumb ass to rehab multiple <laughs> times and made sure your sweet darling children didn't know that their dad was a fucking de- alcoholic degenerate. <laughs> so why don't you put some respect <laughs> on her name? It's always the woman who has the kids who becomes like, what, boring and not, n- not fun, yeah. I think, because he said that basically Jennifer was the one jennifer garner i should because you should J-Lo. specify yeah garner was driving him to drink that i think his comment was like if i stood in that marriage i'd be an alcoholic still mm-hmm. something like that right mm-hmm. it was terrible mm-hmm. it was so tactless like Piece of shit that is not only baby mama that is like more than that it's yeah. mrs baby mama yeah who would you represent Root. what celebrity couple and for who um either I'm really torn between uh, Bill and Melinda Gates, mm. rep- repping obviously Melinda, mm-hmm. would love to have done that, mm-hmm. or Jeff B. Mm. I want the billionaires who weren't shit before becoming billionaires, who mm-hmm. had these wives, who and they didn't have Just prenups. Just so like you were a fucking nobody before you met my, yeah. my client. Exactly. Yeah. And then they cheat on their wives mm-hmm. now that they're fucking big and bad, mm-hmm. and now they're gone. And Melinda, I mean, I mean, I don't know if there was a much drama there, but it seems like she made out pretty okay. I and mean, they're just very classy. So I think that they're like, we're off trying to save the world. So we're not going to get into like the mud over our divorce. Yeah, I think I need more. I think I need more drama for me to be. You definitely need um, more drama. To be entertained. So I would probably go Mackenzie Scott. Okay. So Jeff B's ex-wife. Yep. Because no prenup. Yep. And that seems like a lot of money. That seems like a good payout for me. A lot me. of money for okay. you. Yeah, I knew where that was going. Either way, yep, good yep, payout yep, yep, for yep. me. Your girl's the divorce liar. Naturally. Um, all right. Moving into our exclusive Patreon content. If you want to know more about us, if you want to get into the shits and giggles, go sign up. Now's your time. All right. That concludes our this was particularly fun um patron section and we got in a cut deep we laughed we cried we we i mean we just we the whole gambit of, of human emotion yeah. right there so if you want to know what we, where we hope to be in a few years judges you you'll become a, a patreon judgey yeah. um and a bestie and go sign up um but in the interim tell your friends about us tell everybody about us please spread the word because your girls are trying to make it Tell your boss, tell your assistant if you have one, tell... Ooh, if you have an assistant, that's real fast. Yeah, I don't, we do not have an assistant. Tell us so, what that lifestyle is yeah, like. please, write into us. We are each other's assistants, and it's not going well. No, tell your delivery men. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, please do. And uh, as always, thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Legally Judgy. We hope you enjoyed listening to us talk as much as we love the sound of our own voices. If you did, please subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Also, join us on our Patreon for more judgy shits and giggles. Until next time. Bye.